Hello, I'm Nick, Exploding Lemur. Um, I've been doing IT for a long time. I've been coming to DEF CON for a long time. Um, it's awesome to see... So this is going to sound weird. It's awesome to see people that were born when I first came to DEF CON that are coming to DEF CON now. <laughs> and I feel old. Uh, playing with electronics and stuff for forever. Um, playing with SDR for a while. I've been a ham for about 20 years. Um, so I like radios. I like... Uh, listening to stuff and monitoring and seeing what fun I can I can hear um, so how many radios do we have on aircraft a lot uh, we've got various systems for communication um, uh, telemetry systems um, either uh, just one way or uh, two way ping response uh, navigation uh, as all kinds of stuff, and then, of course, on commercial aircraft, much in the way of passenger entertainment. Um, so let's start with the easy ones, voice communication. Uh, aircraft always need to talk to uh, air traffic control, um, ground traffic, uh, each other. Um, so there is uh, VHF, which is typically used in kind of close in within... Uh, depending on the altitude of the aircraft, you can have about 100 miles or so of range, um, plus or minus, etc. Uh, and hang on, there we go. The space bar wasn't working. Um, the VHF uh, voice comms are all AM, um, which is just amplitude modulation. It's very simple. Has a, a carrier and two side lobes. Um, the nifty thing about AM is, from the control powers, tower's perspective, uh, whoever is the closer aircraft is going to be louder. Um, actually, it will uh, receive as louder in, the, um, in their receivers because the amplitude of that signal is going to be higher than uh, anything other uh, that's far away. Um, if you have aircraft uh, talking over each other, you can actually hear that there is doubling going on instead of with FM, where your receiver will capture a closer signal that is within um, a certain number of dB. I can't remember off the top of my head. Anyway, uh, AM, you'll hear this fun squealing sound, which is the phase difference between the carriers of the two transmitters, but you can also kind of hear um, the, the voice is kind of mixing somewhat. Uh, and that's going to be at uh, 118 to 137 megahertz. Um, AM being entirely analog. Uh, no encryption, no uh, integrity checks, no authentication, etc. Um, which you will see as a theme throughout this talk. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, approach, departure and route, etc. Uh, oh yes, uh, there are also the uh, automated weather reports from uh, from the ground, so pilots can kind of tune in and, and hear what's going on nearby. Uh, there's also HF for transoceanic flights that uses single sideband, um, which suppresses the carrier and one of the side lobes. Um, it's more energy efficient and. Uh, that actually gives you an easier time hearing uh, pilots talking over each other because you don't have that uh, carrier um, phase interaction. Uh, so that's uh, 2.8 to 25 megahertz or so. Um, that also has weather reports. Ooh, ah, there we go. I thought I had another thing. Uh, weather reports, um, air traffic, etc. Uh, the fun thing about HF is. Uh, it is entirely dependent on uh, solar weather, so if there are any uh, sunspots, solar, solar flares, etc., um, where we are in the solar cycle, uh, and uh, the time of day and the frequency you're using uh, where the transmit and receive stations are, because at different times of day the ionosphere will be doing different things, and different signals will bounce off it in different ways. So it's not nearly as predictable and, uh, uh, yeah, predictable. I'll s stick with that. I'm sorry, I am super out of it, so <laughs> bear with me. Um, 
so that's that's pretty much it for voice. Uh, the, let's go on to data, uh, which there's even more fun stuff. Um, there's the VHF data link, which uh, again just is on those uh, same VHF channels. Um, it is. Uh, hang on. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Um, it. Make sure that's. Yeah. Uh, it's an eight state differential phase shift keying uh, modulation. Um, there we go. Uh, carries uh, ACARS, uh, which we'll get to shortly. Um, there's also the HF data link, <coughs> which is uh, the same frequencies as the HF voice communications. Uh, much lower bit rate, um, maxes out at 1800 bits per second. Uh, where's the uh, VHF data link? I think it was uh, uh, 30 or so kilobits per second. Uh, this uses a variety of uh, phase shift modulations, um, either two, four, or eight way. Uh, also carries ACARS. <coughs> And then as for ACARS, uh, it is the Aircraft Communication Addressing and Reporting System. Uh, it has uh, telemetry, um, status of various systems in the aircraft. Uh, sometimes it'll carry position information. Um, also uh, communications between um, uh, ground controllers and the aircraft and aircraft and ground controllers. Uh, I should be hitting space more often. Um, CPDLC is the Controller Pilot Data Link Communications. Uh, it's basically um, cockpit to ground SMS uh, used in uh, commercial aircraft. They'll use it to uh, uh, get uh, route clearances and such through their um, uh, controllers and check in and do some various messaging in route saying, hey, I'm going to I'd like to descend to, you know, flight level, whatever. Can I do that? Cool. Yay. Um, for position telemetry, sorry, uh, we have a variety of systems. Um, so the mode S transponder is uh, the kind of predecessor to ADSB. Uh, it uses it's in use by the secondary surveillance radar systems. So. Uh, air traffic control, um, think of those big spinning radar dishes. Um, for the most part, all those are doing is sending out a, uh, a one gigahertz ping, and then they get back a slightly higher one gigahertz response at 10, 1090 megahertz. Um, and that includes the uh, aircraft um, transponder ID, uh, squat code, and altitude. It's a, a pretty limited subset of data. Uh, and then just through the um, spinning radar dish sending out that ping, it says, okay, the dish was pointing in this direction. It took this long for the response to come back, so I know that the aircraft is on that heading, and I know it's that far away because I can calculate based on the speed of light. Um, then uh, ADSB is the one that everyone's having fun with these days. Um, is a pulse position modulation signal uh, uh, and carries a lot more stuff. Uh, the transponder ID, squat code, uh, flight or tail number, altitude, speed, heading, location, climb rate. Um, yes, I said altitude. So that's essentially just the aircraft transmitting constantly. This is where I am. This is what I'm doing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, ADSB is automated dependent surveillance uh, broadcast. So it's constantly broadcasting. Uh, it's automated. It's doing it whenever it wants. Um, and it is a uh, dependent surveillance system. So the uh, air traffic control depends on the aircraft actually sending this, which is the dependent part. Whereas the uh, Mode S transponder is. Um, I guess a semi-independent system, and then uh, primary surveillance or, or primary radar systems are uh, really just. I send out a ping, I get a response. I see there's something there, something on that heading, and that's all I know. <clears throat> um, Renderman is doing some uh, ADSB receiver workshops. 
uh, or was. I, I don't know what the schedule is for that. Um, if you had a chance to go to that, if they've happened or if they haven't happened, see if you can get a chance to go to those. Build your own ADSB receiver. See what's in the air. It's pretty cool. Uh, Renderman also has a bunch of talks on ADSB and the terribleness within. Um, again, unencrypted, unauthenticated. Uh, that one is super easy to just throw anything into the air and make stuff appear on people's screens. So uh, it's not so great. Um, there is also uh, you, the Universal Access Transceiver, uh, which is a 978 megahertz system that is in the U.S. only. Um, it's utilized for general aviation craft that uh, fly under... Um, 18,000 feet. So, uh, commercial aircraft, even though they, I mean, if they're in that zero to 18,000 foot window, they fly above 18,000 feet eventually, so they stick to ADSB. Uh, the reason this is set up is just because of the sheer amount of general aviation traffic in the U.S., uh, and ADSB doesn't have any sort of carrier sense, so they are just constantly squawking and easily talk over each other in crowded areas. <clears throat> Um, so as, as an incentive to get uh, general aviation pilots to spend a bunch of money on these systems, the FAA said, okay, let's put some nifty stuff in here. So uh, in addition to the uh, transponder sending their telemetry data out, they can also receive from ground stations uh, weather, NOTAMs, TFRs, uh, other en route data, um, and there's also a system that will, uh, once it, once a ground station receives a UAT packet from something in the area, it will start uh, retransmitting ADSB uh, stuff that it receives that is in the vicinity of uh, that aircraft. So um, it gets the benefit of seeing all of the ADSB stuff, uh, e even though it's not on that on that frequency. Uh, and then also Sirius XM, really. Uh, they have a uh, aircraft service that also gives them, uh, it gives pilots NOTAMs and TFRs, etc. Uh, weather data, um, their selling point, according to their website, is that it's higher resolution stuff and you get it more frequently. Um, I haven't looked to confirm that, but uh, I'm don't know how much is just marketing BS or not. So, uh, but you also get music from from their 180 channels of, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, and then there's also uh, data communications and telemetry systems. Um, Inmarsat is one that is uh, commonly seen in the news after the uh, Malaysia air flight uh, disappearance. Um, so the Aero service uh, carries, um, yeah, let me get there. Uh, carries ACARS data, um, and uh, it's actually pretty easy to receive the ground station to aircraft transmissions. You just need a tiny patch antenna um, for about 1.6 gigahertz, uh, circular polarized. An amplifier will help, and then an SDR um, will let you pull that down uh, to get the other direction, which is aircraft to ground. Um, you need a like eight foot uh, or so dish to receive C band uh, transmissions. So it goes one way and then the other. Um, and that tr uh, translation happens in the satellite itself. So that one is the more interesting one if you want to see aircraft location data uh, off of the satellite. Um, mm -hmm. There's also uh, within that signal, there's ADSC. Uh, which is sort of a pub sub model. Um, the uh, a ground station will send up a signal and say, "Hey, I would like this data from you," and then the aircraft will say, "Okay, here, I'll send it to you now," and start beaconing it. And that will include uh, a variety of different things, not just location. Um, it will also have uh, you, you can subscribe to other aircraft uh, telemetry systems and get a bunch of data, um, engine state, whatever. Uh, there's also digital voice. Um, that one uh, will make use of the AMBI codec or uh, LPC, um, which are just digital voice codecs. Uh, 
easy to find decoders for those. Um, and then there's also Swift 64, which is, uh, this one's fun, uh, it's actually ISDN. So for the uh, old telecom people, yay. <laughs> Navigation, satellites, uh, GPS, GLONASS, Baidu, Galileo, etc. Uh, this is Magical Relativistic Atomic Space Clock Pixie Dust. Um, this works by uh, every satellite carrying an atomic clock uh, that is corrected for um, general relativistic differences uh, where the higher you get from uh, the Earth, the faster your clock runs. Um, you can do some fun experiments if you have a couple of nice like cesium time sources you can set one down on the ground and then go up to like a you know 5000 foot mountaintop and then come back down and the one that was on the mountaintop will be a little bit faster um you know great great outing for the kids <laughs> um uh, anyway so the uh satellites have that corrected signal they send out their uh just the time beacon basically and your receiver gets that it sees the difference in time um, on each of the received signals it has its own internal almanac that is transmitted by the satellites that tell it where the satellites are at any given time in the sky and so from that it can calculate um, okay satellites are supposed to be here I'm getting a time of this and this and this and this I must be here and that's how that fun magic pixie dust works. <laughs> uh, one that is, uh, yeah, uh, anyway. Uh, VOR, uh, VHF Omnidirectional Ranging, uh, is a beacon system, um, 108 to 118 megahertz. Uh, encodes the station ID, uh, other data. And there are two systems. There's the conventional VOR, which has a single, uh, or one, omnidirectional carrier signal and then a secondary signal that's transmitted from a phased array antenna and it um, has a phase delay of the of its signal in relation to the uh, carrier signal that changes across the uh, entire rotation of that antenna so uh, if you are so if you get the the main signal and then the secondary signal is 90 degrees out of phase with the first one. That means you're on a bearing of 90 degrees from that beacon. Uh, the 270 degrees out of phase, you're 270 degrees from that beacon. Um, and that's, yeah, that just tells you basically where you are um, in relation to the beacon from... Uh, uh, zero degrees is going to be north. Anyway, um, then there's also the Doppler VOR, which has a uh, an array of antennas that are spread much further apart, um, and those are uh, you rotate the carrier signal through those um, either mechanically or electrically. Um, the mechanically is literally just like a servo with a, a piece of coax that kind of spins around and vaguely goes next to the feed lines of all the other antennas so it kind of uh, as it starts to couple with one it'll it'll slowly stop coupling with another goes around gives you a nice constant uh, rotation instead of a step rotation um, electronically you can do that with uh, just RF switches um, and then the uh, redshift and uh, blue shift of the signal as it rotates towards you and then away from you, you can tell at what point um, it is on uh, center and uh, basically when when the so yeah, so as it is uh, at this point and it's coming towards you, uh, that's going to be um, the maximum blue shift and then it's going to hit a point where it's going to um, stop blue sh uh, yeah, stop blue shifting and start red shifting away from you um, which is to say the the frequency as it approaches you is going to be a little bit higher as it leaves you it's going to be a little bit lower and then from there you can tell okay I am on this bearing from it 
uh, uh, DMA, uh, bleh, sorry, DME, uh, distance measuring equipment, um, is UHF uh, microwave-ish. Uh, it is literally just ping response. Um, you send out a, uh, a signal and say, hey, and the station receives it. It waits a set amount of time, which I think is typically 50 microseconds. Then it sends you the response back. And thanks to the wonders of knowing the constant of speed of light, you can figure out how far you are, how far away you are from it. Um, the DMA, the sorry, DME system. Uh, I'm playing with uh, DOS computers at home, so DMA settings are stuck in my mind. Don't ask me why. Um, it has to do a bit of math uh, to understand where you are in relation to it. Um, from a ground distance perspective, because if you're up in the air here and the station is here, the distance is going to be this section of a triangle. And fortunately, you also know your altitude, which is this section of the triangle. So then you can easily solve for this section, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Yay, Pythagoras helps us know where we are. Uh, da -da. Uh, TACAN is a military VR DMA system. Uh, it can be co-located with civilian systems uh, to provide DME service for civil aircraft. Um, but the uh, VOR stuff is um, not available for, for civil use. Uh, navigation, the ILS, uh, that previous talk, uh, if you were here for that, is, was fantastic for a guide on how uh, ILS works. Um, so basically you have uh, two transponders, one um, VHF, one UHF. Uh, they're, they send out uh, two signals, one to the left of the run runway, one to the right, one kind of low, one kind of high. Um, and those are modulated at either 90 or 150 hertz. And from the relative uh, signal power of those two signals, you can tell if you are to one side or the other or on center line, um, laterally and vertically, uh, coming into your glide slope. Uh, as far as passenger entertainment goes, um, you have all of your fun internet services. Inmarsat provides the Swift broadband service. Uh, there's Viasat and GoGo. Um, GoGo has some satellite service, but uh, I believe most of it is actually uh, ground-based. So they have ground stations that talk directly to the aircraft instead of through a satellite. Uh, benefit of that, less ping time. Um, Admiral uh, Grace Hopper uh, had this has this great uh, little thing that she did, which was uh, she carried around a nanosecond with her. Um, just a piece of wire that was precisely one nanosecond long in terms of the speed of light. And she would, uh, when other generals would ask her why does it take so long to get stuff from a satellite back, she'd say, well, there are a lot of these between here and the satellite. Um, the geosynchronous ones are uh, 25,000 miles up, 20 to 20, 22,000. Thank you. <clears throat> so, yeah, it takes a bit. Um, so, yes, uh, those are all the fun passenger hammock systems. Uh, so that was my fun, super fast, vague run through all of the aircraft radio systems. Um, I am going to put up uh, this online. I'll show you links in a minute. Um, I also have information on how to receive all of these things if you want to. Uh, it's a lot of really cool stuff. Um, for those that do have ADSB receive stations or want to set them up, I highly encourage you, if you're in the U.S., to get a second uh, SDR dongle, set it up for 978 megahertz because there's a lot more cool stuff there, um, low-level uh, general or aviation stuff that you are not going to see from just ADSB transponders. So that is very nifty stuff. Uh, anyway, um, after that spiel, uh, does anybody have any questions? Yes. I'm sorry, say that again? Yes. 
suggesting adding take has uh, some other systems as well. Okay. Uh, okay. We got, we got time for a I'll make a note. Before our next uh, anyone else? Okay. Um, Please thank you. I'll speak to you. Hey. Wait. How much more time do we have? How much more time? Oh, you got more time. Okay. I'm going to do a quick uh, spiel on ADSB and UAT systems then on how to optimize your system for RF performance. Um, uh, so. High gain antennas on these systems uh, actually can hurt you in some cases, especially for UAT. Um, the higher gain an antenna goes, the uh, lower the receive lobes are um, vertically. So with UAT stuff, there's a lot of low level, thing, low level things flying uh, pretty close to you, above you, and your antenna is just really not going to get that if it's a super high gain antenna. Um, that can help you for uh, ADS-B stuff if you're looking for things far off. But again, as commercial aircraft overfly you, uh, you're just not going to see stuff straight up. Um, locating your receiver next to the antenna is the best thing you can do. Uh, you can also use an inline uh, low noise amplifier at your antenna and have your receiver located a little further away. Um, feed line uh, matters. The thinner the feed line, usually the higher the loss per uh, foot or meter of the, of the feed line, especially at those higher frequencies. Um, if you can manage to run it and you, you want to, you can use LMR 400, which is uh, nearly half an inch in diameter, but it's pretty low loss at those microwave frequencies. Um, filters are good. Uh, Filtering before your amplifier, uh, you probably want to do that if you have a lot of really high high level local RF stuff, so you don't overload your amplifier. However, having the filter before the amplifier means that you increase the overall noise floor of your system uh, because the filter is going to introduce some loss, um, and so the signal that you're receiving is going to drop down a little. Noise floor is pretty constant here, and then your LNA is just going to kind of raise everything up like that. So the uh, signal itself in relation to the noise floor uh, is is not going to be, the ratio is not going to be right. The signal noise ratio is going to be worse. Uh, let's see what else. Um, yeah, uh, Flight Aware sells 1090 and 978 megahertz uh, antennas. They sell a 1090 filter. Um, Oputronics sells 1090 and 978 megahertz uh, filtered amplifiers. Um, I actually have a reel of 100 978 megahertz saw filters that I forgot to bring with me. They're in my room, uh, so I can go grab those and bring them back. If anybody has really good soldering skills to solder a uh, QFN uh, 3 by 3.5 millimeter uh, surface mount device. Um, so, anyway, that's it. Thanks.